In this video, I will be performing a linear static analysis on this plain strain example. Full details of this exercise are on page 334 of the PDF linked in the video description below. I'll first begin by starting a new patch run session. And I'll create a new file and I'll call it problem 4. The units for this exercise are inches, pounds, and PSI. I'll first begin by creating or clicking OK here and then creating a new coordinate system by going to coordinates and three point. My type is cylindrical, leave the defaults and click apply. You'll see my new coordinate system here at the origin. I'll create a curve using the XYZ method or actually I'll be using the 2D arc angle method. The radius from the origin will be three inches. My end angle will be 15 degrees. My rotation axis will be the Z axis or coordinate zero with the third axis, which is Z. And the center point will be this crosshair, which is zero, zero, zero. I click apply and my first curve is created. My next curve has a radius of six or nine actually. The end angle and start angles are zero and 15. Now the other values are the same, so I hit apply. Next I'll create a surface using the curve method. This allows me to select one curve followed by the next one and I'll fill in and create a surface. I'll go ahead and translate this actually to create my other five surfaces. So here under transform, click surfaces. So here you have transform, surface, click rotate. Here we'll rotate about the Z axis here. My rotation angle will be 30 degrees. My repeat count will be five. And for my surface list, I'll simply select this surface. Uh, here you have auto execute checked. This will automatically generate the surfaces once you select an entity. So here as soon as I click surface one, I'll create the five surfaces. If you accidentally make a mistake, you can click the undo button here and it'll undo that action. And here I have surface one in here, so I click apply again. And I'll go ahead and create my five surfaces here. I can now move on to create my materials under the properties tab. I'll click and select isotropic here under material name, I'll call it just material. Under my input properties, my elastic modulus is 1000 PSI and my Poisson ratio is 0.499. Click OK and click apply. Now we have to assign the material to these surfaces. So under 2D properties, click shell. Under property set name, type in shell. Under input properties, select this icon here and select this material or before doing that I should cancel this and switch my options to or I've actually selected the wrong 2D properties I should select 2D solid here make sure it says 2D or create 2D 2D solid leave the name as shell your options should be plain strain. Under input properties, make sure you've selected this material. Select OK. Under your application region, select surfaces 1 through 4. 1, 2, 3, 4. You can simply drag and click. Click add, OK, and apply. Here, let me rotate this. Here, I've called this shell. It should actually be called something else. Here I'll call my next one property two. For plain strain, select revise formulation for your input properties. You should have material selected here. If not, select it like you did before. Click OK for your application region. Select these leftmost surfaces. Hold the shift key to select multiple entries. Click add, OK, and apply. So now I can move on to my boundary conditions tab. Here I'll 
define a boundary condition here, here for every surface. So click displacement constraint. I'll simply call this set name constraint. Under input data, I wish to prevent translation in the two direction of this coordinate system, which is the hoop direction. So here, select this coordinate system, coordinate system one, before it was zero, which in, which was for the this global system. But this time, we're selecting this cylindrical coordinate system. Click OK for your application region. You can select curves here. What you can do is simply click, hold shift, and go around and select the multiple curves. Or what you can do is move this to the side. You can click polygon pick here. Make sure your cursor's in here. You can use this polygon pick and you'll see it's on in the depressed state. So this allows me to start a click basically allows me to move around and create an enclosure in which the entities will be covered. So then click this last point and I'll select these surfaces or these curves. Here it's selected surface 1, curve 3, surface 1, curve 1, surface 2, curve 3 and so on. Click add, OK and apply. You see it's defined there. Next I want to add my pressure. So here, under Element Uniform, click Pressure. Tap in the new set name is Pressure. For your target element type, type in 2D. For your input data, type in 100. Click OK and select Application Region. Zoom into the model. Here, you'll go ahead and just select these outer edges here. So Surface 6, add your Curve 2, and hold the Shift key so you can click and select other edges. Click Add. You'll notice they stay pink, indicating they've been selected. Click OK and apply. And you should see arrows for each edge here. Now we can go ahead and move on to my meshing. First, I'll go ahead and view this in the XY orientation or the front view. Here you can do two things to hide the boundary conditions here. You can click Recite Graphics here or turn on your model tree and uh, check them on and off. Another way is to just select this uh, plot LBC markers. Uh, but to turn them off, you would have to click this again. And to see the this this icon here plots the boundary conditions that are in the current load case. I'll hide the model tree and now I'll go to the meshing tab to actually mesh this. For my mesh seeds, I'll click one way bias and I'll use the L1 and L2 method. So here, as soon as I'm in the mesh seed, I get little arrows indicating which way is the direction for each uh, curve. So I know that uh, looking at this diagram, the arrow points from the L1 to the L2. So I know that L1's here and L2's here. So for my L1, I want a value of 0 0.60787 inches. My L2 will be 0.24313 inches. And for auto execute, I'll, I'll uncheck that. I'll select this first curve and apply, and you'll see the mesh sheet is there. So now I can, what I can do, like I did before, is use the polygon pick select these curves here or these edges you see they're all entered here and they're all highlighted orange or pink click apply now the mesh sheet it is there next thing I want to do is apply a uniform mesh sheet to these uh, inner edges so click uniform I want three elements uh, I'll turn off auto execute I'll simply select and hold the shift key to select all these other edges so like this, this, and so on, and hit apply. Now you see your mesh sheets are there. So now I can go to the surface mesher. And this one is a quad four mesh, so just select it, surface one, and hit apply. 
This next one is a quad eight. So let's we'll switch this to quad eight. So like this surface, surface two, and hit enter. This next one is a tria element, tria three actually. And select like the surface, surface three, and hit apply. The next one is a tria six mesh. And select so like a surface four here, hit apply. My next mesh is a quad. Leave quad four, select this mat or the surface, surface five, and hit apply. My last one is a tria mesh. Select surface six and hit apply. Let me close this form by double clicking the tab. Now, if I turn on my boundary conditions, it, it looks like it's just applied to these points here. To get a better view, you can go to the display load BC's element properties icon or label here here check on show on fem only click apply and turn on your boundary conditions again and now you can see they are actually assigned to all the nodes here and this is a good way of ensuring that you apply your boundary conditions properly to turn this off uncheck this and click apply clean this and turn on the boundary conditions again and you'll see that it's back to normal click refresh graphics to hide this now one last thing i have to do is modify my nodes right now they're most likely using this coordinate system as a reference and analysis coordinate frame what i have to use is this cylindrical coordinate system so I have to go ahead and modify the nodes. To do this, go to the meshing tab, go to the top. For your action, you would modify your nodes and you will actually edit them. So I want to edit the analysis and reference coordinate system. I want to use this cylindrical coordinate system called chord one and use the same coordinate system one here. For your node list, you want to select all the nodes so you can drag a window over them. Or you can use the shortcut here called select all or pick all and click apply. Here the feedback tells me that all 645 nodes have been modified. Now I can move on to the analysis tab to actually run this. So here click analyze entire model. I'll do a quick modification to my subcase. Here I'll modify the default subcase. It uses the default load case and I actually want to output an extra request. So far I have my displacement stresses and forces being outputted. I want to also output my element strains just in case you want to review those results too. So ensure you have element strains here and here selected. Click apply. You can cancel out of here. And now you can hit apply and this will submit the job to MSC Nashtram for analysis. Once that is done, you can import your XDB results by clicking this icon and hit apply. To view results, you can go to the results tab here. But before we do that, to make this a little cleaner on us, I'll create a, a group for each mesh here. So under the home tab, turn on the model tree you can do this two ways you can create a group using this tool or you can actually just uh, click anywhere in the model tree or right click and you can uh, create a group here so for my first group i'll call it one uh, uncheck this for my entity selection i'll just select uh, these the, these elements or these entities here and you'll see it selects a, a bunch of items click apply next I'll make a new one called 2 I'll use the polygon pick as before and I'll enclose all these uh, uh, entities here apply and do the same for each other one
and click apply for the last one. So now you see I've defined uh, six separate groups. So if I uncheck default group, and here uh, I get a prompt telling me that uh, this originally was the current group and it wants me to select a, a new current group. So I'll just select group one as a current group. Now what I've done is, I should turn that on. Uh, make sure you always have one on. And now you can see that uh, I can turn them off and on. So whenever you were my results, this will make it a lot easier. So I'm going to go back to results and say I want to view the fringe. Say the stress tensor, to, or let me review the displacements first. Let me view the radial displacements. So the X component, I can hit apply. Hide all the groups except for this one. Hit apply, or cancel here, hit apply here. Now you can see my values here. So when I compare this to the actual values I should be getting. You can see what I get. So here I get a 0 0.317. I should be getting 0 0.1 or 0 0.2250 inches for the outer edge and then the 0.412 or 0.525 for the inner edge. So here I get a 0.5 inches and a 0.169 inches. And then I can do that for the next group. So I get similar results and I can do that all around. Uh, every time you switch on or off a, another group, you get this window, you can click cancel or just go back to the results tab here. So click apply, you get the same values for displacements for the inner and the outer edge. Same same thing here. Same thing here. Same thing here. Here we've actually gotten 5.3, which is uh, pretty close to this. Now to view my radial stresses, I can do this. Go back to the results tab, make sure you're here. Scroll down, select stress sensor, quantities, X component, or radio stresses. Click apply, and you can note the values as you go along. So 18, 100 here. I've accidentally closed that one. Uh, 125 here, 25 here. And just to compare what I should be getting here, I should be getting 125 for the inner and the uh, 25 for the outer and that's what I got here and here you can see my results are along those lines and you could do this for every other section and that was my radial stresses not to view my hoop stresses so here what I would do is go back to my results tab switch to the Y component which is your hoop stress click apply here you can see your values so for the outer, I would get a 0.8. Here I would get 91. Here you should be getting 100 psi because of the pressure. So we should be getting zero for the outer edge and 100 for the inner edge. And what you can do is just turn them off and on and go around the loop essentially to to see your results. And that is actually what we do end up getting. Go back to the home tab, refresh this, turn off your model tree if you would like. Make sure to save and this ends this video.